The Apostle Paul was able to say in Romans 15, 23 that there was no place left for him to continue his work. This is in a period of religious idolatry, sexual immorality, and yet the gospel was spreading like a wildfire. Could we see the same thing in our day? Could we see the same reality happening here today as what we see in the New Testament? Maybe if we do what the New Testament does, we would see that reality. If we would obey the commands of Christ, if we would renew the urgency to make disciples, to make disciples, to fulfill the Great Commission, could we see the same thing that the Apostle Paul saw, where we could say in our reality in this generation that there's no place left for us to continue the work of this gospel ministry. It's nothing less than a movement on the face of the earth, resurrecting the church to be the church by making disciples that make disciples of all people, baptizing them and teaching them to obey the commands of Jesus, and in the process experiencing the power and the presence of the living God. No Place Left is at once the movement of God on a grand scale and at the same time a broken life recovered by grace to pursue the pleasures of life in Christ, multiplied over and over and over in our city, our nation, and to the very ends of the earth. We live in a broken world today. You turn on the news or flip through your social media feeds and it's in your face. People are hurting, confused, far from God. According to the Barna Group, 65% of the people in our region will not enter into our churches. No matter how incredible our churches are or whether a friend invites them or not, they're not going to come to our churches. The church needs to have a vision to reach these people and impact the lostness in our region. If we don't have that vision in our churches, we'll never make a difference in the city. We won't change the landscape or the culture. But in the same study, 70% of those people said they're open to having a discussion about Jesus Christ. So if we will leave our pews, go out into our communities, engage people with the gospel, we have the opportunity to impact these people that are far from God, and we'll see our neighborhoods, our cities, and our nation begin to transform. The gospel must flood this neighborhood because we know that's, that's the problem is there's a lack of light here. And the way that you deal with a lack of light is you bring light and then darkness goes. Hip Hop Hope is taking this no place left vision to Houston's Fifth Ward, an area of the city with 58% poverty rate and high rates of broken families and crime. They share the gospel through neighborhood block parties, discipling new believers and training them to share with others. We knock on doors. Um, we strategically map out the, the areas we're going to walk. And now it's to the point where if you walk down that street, there's a crowd of people, they'll say, yeah, yeah, we know, Hip Hop Hope. We know where you're at. We got you, all right? Because they're so familiar with us being out here in the community and involved. We can't fulfill the Great Commission unless we make disciples, plant churches that reach their communities in depth. And so our No Place Left vision is uh, we're going to take this continent again. Steve Addison is an Australian author, pastor, and church planner who has relocated to Britain to help catalyze movements in European cities where the gospel has become almost non-existent. Now we're looking at maybe, you know, five, six percent believers in, in uh, formerly, you know, Christianized Europe. And in some places that's overestimating how many believers there are. And there are whole neighborhoods now that are really totally unbreached. We've got to step up again, another opportunity in history to, uh, to reach this part of the world. God has brought the nations to our backyard. In fact, there's 70,000 Pakistanis that are living just in Southwest Houston. And so my heart is just for them to have an opportunity for each one of them to hear a clear gospel conversation, the life-changing news of Jesus Christ. Keaton Koch is one of our partner No Place Left missionaries in Houston. For the past year, he has shared the gospel with over 250 of his neighbors in this predominantly Muslim neighborhood and praying that God would draw people out of darkness and begin a movement there. And God worked in the heart of a young man, gave him a dream and a vision of Christ. And, uh, and I just began to disciple him. 
and one day we were spending time together here in my apartment. We said, hey, let's go to this mosque nearby and let's just share it with our brothers. Just the love was overflowing from our hearts for the Muslim world. And so we went and just had a fruitful night there at the mosque. It was the week before Ramadan and they had invited us to come back that week and to share with the whole population there. And we were standing here on the sidewalk and this guy pulls up in a truck and demands for us to give us our money to him and holds us at gunpoint. And between the three of us, we had $8 between us. I just offered to, to the guy, I live here. If, if you need anything, a place to stay, if you need food, uh, come up to my apartment. And the guy's countenance just started to change. My friend started to share the gospel with him, began to pray with him. And he fell to his hands, still holding this gun, and started weeping and uh, he said, I'm just desperate right now. And we got to relay to him that we were all once desperate in need of Christ Jesus and his forgiveness. And this guy, he gave his life to Christ that night. So we went from gunpoint to embrace. We ended that night with just hugs around. God turned that around for his glory. I'll never forget Hassan, my, my, my friend, Muslim background believer, he turned to me afterwards and he said, I was ready to die right there. Now this may not mean a lot to us, but this was a guy that was about to go through persecution with his family and his community because he was coming out in faith, proclaiming Christ. We're one person away from a movement breaking out in this place. So in a sense, I'm, I'm on a manhunt to find this person, this man, woman, who that person is going to reach this complex and beyond. No Place Left is a movement of movements to mobilize all of God's people to finish the task of the Great Commission. This is a disciple-making movement equipping every believer with simple, reproducible tools to share the gospel with those far from God. Then teaching these new believers how to obey and follow Jesus and training them to go and make other disciples just like them. Each new disciple that makes another disciple begins a new generation. With each new generation, leaders emerge, churches are formed, and the movement grows wider and deeper until every people group, every segment of society is engaged with a movement of multiplying disciples and churches that's just going generation after generation to penetrate an area. If this sounds like a God-sized task, it is. And it's only through the power of God that it's possible. God is doing this movement today right before our eyes in North India, where there's a rapid multiplication of disciple making and disciples and churches forming in an extreme lost and broken area. When you see God doing something this amazing, you start asking the question, why can't this work in the United States? Why can't it work in other places? And we've discovered we just need to do what Jesus did in Luke chapter 10. Uh, I, I just, I think the Spirit of God is, is opening up doors in North America that we haven't seen before. That's what's really encouraging to me is how many churches, how many pastors, how many leaders are saying, we've tried this, we're not reaching lostness. We, we need to start making disciples. Troy Cooper is a movement catalyst in a region of South Florida that's 96% unchurched and has the highest concentration of people who've never stepped foot in a church in their life. When you look at the scriptures, when you look at the book of Acts, it was the churches that carried out the task for getting the gospel out to entire regions. The Jerusalem church got the gospel out to Judea, Samaria, Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch. And so I believe God wants to use churches that have started to be the catalytic agents that they would be training and mobilization centers to pursue no place left locally and also globally to finish the task. We're starting to see churches in North America do that. Many of the top leaders in the mission movement today see Houston as a very strategic city. One, because of its broad diversity, the nations have come to Houston. Two, because of its rich resources and churches and missions giving and leadership capacity. It seems as if God is bringing that all together for this movement to catalyze breakthroughs across our city and beyond. Our challenge is focus. We need to coordinate our focus on the majority of our population that's not coming to our churches and bring the gospel to them until every segment of our society is reached. But we also need the discipline to stay and disciple these new believers. 
Our churches tend to be very fervent about sharing the gospel, but we fail to take the next step and make disciples that make disciples. We've got churches all over the city, but they've lost the DNA of the Great Commission. Houston in the U.S. is historically probably the most prayed over city in the, in the country. There is a spiritual environment here that's unlike any place in the U.S. And I just think Houston's ripe for a movement that can penetrate every segment. Immigrants, you know, lower income, middle income, upper income, um, every geographical area. Steve Smith is an author, missionary, and one of the leading and most highly respected Great Commission leaders in the world. Steve recently relocated to Houston and is now helping train No Place Left leaders across the city. Little by little, we're seeing the church embrace it. It's difficult because it goes against a lot of our forms that we have in Western or established Christianity. It's interesting, I was talking to a group of pastors about three years ago, and I said to them, you know, we're trying to plant churches that can multiply and disciples that can multiply. And they looked at me like, are you crazy? Then I read to them a bit of their Baptist history. 150 years ago, this is the way we were. We're encouraging the church to go back to those roots and say, this is what true discipleship looks like. Every member equipped to do these things. And as that message is going around, God is doing two things. One, he's breaking down our understanding to go back to this basic biblical thinking about how to do these things. But number two, he's breaking down our fears. And fear is the biggest thing that's holding the church back. So what's happening across Houston is guys and gals rising up out of the church seats and saying, let's figure out how to go into the bars and into the ghettos and into the schools to engage people with the gospel. It might be three circles or it might be creation to Christ or something else. But let's just do what Jesus taught his disciples to do in Luke 10, go out two by two, find houses of peace, win them and help them begin to be the network that's gonna reach a whole circle of people that we can't touch. God has uniquely prepared Sugar Creek for this time and opportunity. Our church reflects the great diversity of our city. Sugar Creek also has a rich legacy of missions. Through the ministries we started, our sacrificial giving, and our focus as a church on mission. Over the past few years, we've developed a multi-tiered approach to seeing the vision of No Place Left realized in Houston. First, we're training our members to share the gospel through our gospel conversation training each month. Since February of 2015, we've trained over 700 adults in our church how to share their faith using a simple gospel presentation tool called Three Circles that God is using to create multiplication. Then we do what Jesus taught and go out two by two and put this training into practice by going out into our streets and neighborhoods and sharing the gospel. Once we actually lay out the gospel, uh, a lot of people are like, man, like I've been, I've been waiting for somebody to come and ask me if, if, if they can pray for me or uh, to, to share the gospel with me. And, and so it's pretty uh, amazing how, you know, God has already prepared hearts to be receptive to the gospel. Second, we support and send trainers like Ray Vaughn to train other churches on these reproducible evangelism and discipleship methods to bring renewal to these churches in our city and raise up laborers for the harvest. We're literally going anywhere and everywhere that the Spirit guides us and, and provides an open door platform, both among the saved and the unsaved. So the unsaved, a home receives us, we go into it and we're gonna disciple. The saved, a church receives us, we're gonna go into it, we're gonna train and equip. The big aim there is we wanna multiply training centers across the city so God's army is being enlarged day by day that those that are knowing how to share and who to share with and what to say and how to disciple. Third, we fund and partner with other mission teams in Houston like Keystone Project and Global Gates and Global Frontier Missions and Hip Hop Hope to reach every segment in Houston. Then there are ministries such as Sugar Creek's Urban Camp, which helps speed the multiplication of disciples throughout the city. This summer, we had the opportunity for, you know, our Urban Camp ministry where I serve to really, you know, merge with No Place Left Houston in the alignment of resources and conversations using three circles. And it's just amazing to see the impact that it has. I mean, the ministry has already existed for the last 25 years, but when you start incorporating, you know, how we all share the gospel, and how we all train and we talk about three circles, it brings about like this new sense of urgency with people. And we had a first time huddle leader, first time ever serving. And he's sharing three circles within his huddle. And one of our campers literally gets to truly understand his identity in Christ versus the false identity that the world has given him. One of the little guys was telling me he didn't, 
think he was he was smart. Um, he didn't think that he was handsome, and he internalized him. And he's only in fourth grade. He was on Nowhere Street, going this way with a false identity. You know, he encounters this huddle leader, has this understanding of his identity in Christ, and literally turns and does a 180 and goes back the other way. And then here's this camper who's on fire with his new identity, who's sharing it to his mom, to his grandmother, to his friends at school, and they're hearing the truth of Christ. And you just see one drop in a lake turns into a mighty ripple that just keeps going on and on. And that's what No Place Left is. Finally, we form catalytic teams of our own church members and send them to partner with other movement teams to start No Place Left movements in other cities in the U.S. and abroad, like South Florida. We were called to go to a um, neighborhood that was known as Ground Zero um, by these missionaries out in Florida. And they said no one's ever um, hit Ground Zero because it was known as one of the most dangerous neighborhoods to go to. And so they've been fasting over it just to, for God to provide a group of people to go and hit that neighborhood with the gospel. The first house uh, that we go to, we asked the lady of the house if we can pray for her. She was very receptive to the prayers. Soon after that, she invites us into her home. There was about maybe eight kids um, also in that home who began to kind of raise their hand um, and express, you know, that they wanted to accept Christ. A young man by the name of James uh, shares that he wants to give his life to the Lord. And we begin, you know, praying over him and he begins praying. And while he's praying, I mean, he's He's uh, confessing specific sins. So after that, you know, Stacy talked him through what was the next step, which was baptism. And um, that was even more amazing because he's like, yeah, let's do it. I want to get baptized. We baptized him and immediately after his brothers and sisters were, were in line, kind of arguing on who was going to get baptized next. And then not too long after that, the father, um, who we thought and assumed uh, was a believer, uh, comes, you know, running down the, the hallway into the bathroom, expressing how he wants to get baptized. Um, and so we got, you know, an opportunity to see an entire household come to know the Lord just off of the simple gospel. Very simple, but yet powerful and powerful enough to bring an entire home uh, to their knees and profess in Jesus as Lord. The harvest is plentiful in Houston, but the laborers are few. That's why it's critically important that we make disciples that make disciples to reach the vision of no place left. When Jesus called those disciples, in Mark 1, 17, he said, I want you to follow me. I mean, total abandon to him as king, total surrender. But then he said, but the second side of discipleship is I want you to fish for men. You, you, you can't divide this coin and say, I only, I only like the following Jesus part, but not the fishing for men part. That's what a disciple is. We follow Jesus and we fish for men. And I can't tell you how many places around the world when people go back to what discipleship was meant to be, to follow Jesus with my whole heart, to fish for men around me, God's unlocking a new joy in their life, and they're getting involved in what He's doing in our generation. We just want to continue to build that capacity to be a disciple-making church, a Great Commission church, not defined by our location, not defined by our race, not defined by our age, not defined by our denomination, but we're defined as a kingdom people that are obedient to the kingdom of God. Above all else, let's be the generation that finishes this thing. We've been waiting 2,000 years we missed the first generation that's walking the earth when our Lord's walking the earth, eating meals with them, talking with them. I missed that one. You missed this one. But there's going to be a second generation that finishes what Jesus began, that takes the gospel to every remaining people group. And Jesus said, this gospel will be, will be proclaimed to all the nations, to all the people groups, and then the end will come. And I want to be in that generation that's standing on earth welcoming his return because we know We've done what he said. And so as a church, globally and here in the U.S., we have the resources. We just lack the resolve to finish the task. So around the world, we're asking the church to rise up and finish what Jesus began and finish what other faithful sowers have given their lives to. And what better way to honor him and what better way to honor amazing missionaries in the past than to finish what they began. So that's what we're calling this generation to. Let's be the last generation.